All right, what's up, YouTube? This is Box Wave. Quick, quick video review of the fight. A lot of y'all just saw me on the stream. I had a stream up there for six and a half hours, man. I've never done anything like that before. But listen, just fresh off watching the fight. Uh, first off, just want to say the zone. The zone got to do better. They can never let customers sit through something like that again. Uh, they were waiting for the UFC fight to end. They were making it public that they that they were doing that. The fighters were in their locker rooms just waiting for the UFC fight to end. Um, they can't do stuff like that. You know, we waited over an hour for the final fight to start, you know, and there was a gap between the co-main event and the fight previous to that one. So we literally waited a very long time. The fight didn't start until close to 1.30. Um, and... Eastern and that's that's just extremely late. You know, the fight could have stopped started way before that. So the zone, if we continue to get like nights like this where we're getting UFC or fights on different uh networks and you're gonna make us wait over an hour and give us a thousand interviews and stuff, I will no longer be a subscriber. No way. I mean I love boxing and everything. I do have to cover the fights. But there's other ways of watching the fights. And before I continue to pay, I would rather take my money and find other ways to watch the fight. I don't want to have to do that, but I would do that. Okay, that was that was pathetic. Like, that was way too late, you know? Anyway, let's talk about the fight. Um, Kovalev gets knocked out in the 11th round. Uh, going into the 11th round, I had the fight. I scored a fight, a draw. Uh, there were scorecards all over the place on my group chat. Basically, most of the scorecards had it five to five or six to four for Kovalev. Um, but mostly, mainly those. Those are what I saw mainly going into the eleventh round. Uh, I think Kovalev had a nice start. Um, he started out just tapping the jab and you know landing some light jab, some light jabs, some right hands, you know here and there. Uh, Canelo wasn't throwing much early on, okay? He wasn't in the first three rounds. He wasn't really that aggressive, okay? I thought uh, in the fourth round, he started to pick it up, son. But even then, he wasn't throwing and landing that many shots. Um, he was definitely going to the body. Kovalev was trying to move laterally and trying to maintain that range he had between them. But um, as we got further into the fight, he just couldn't maintain it, couldn't sustain it. All right, uh, the pressure was just too much for him. The problem I have with Kovalev in this, in this fight is there was no point where he was aggressive at all. Like, I understand that he's training with Buddy McGirt and he switched it up, you know, and that's why I made the prediction based on how he's been fighting lately in his last couple of fights. But the thing is, there was no point in the fight where he was throwing any power shots at all, you know. Um, when he did land a right hand, he would land and connect and counter at points, but he wasn't really sitting down on any punches at all in this fight. Everything seemed like, it looked like a sparring session on his end. Uh, I kind of said the same thing about Daniel Jacobs in that fight. I did a review of that fight after that fight was over. Even though I had Canelo win in the fight, I was very surprised of how non-aggressive Daniel Jacobs was in that fight. You know, I thought it felt like a sparring session, you know. Um, and this fight too, it just wasn't a good fight, you know, and that's not no hate on Canelo or anything. I'm just saying as far as action, there really wasn't nothing there. Um, but Canelo was the aggressor, especially in the second half of the fight. He was definitely aggressor and I was giving him more rounds on the second half. I thought the second half was going to be the point where Canelo, I mean, where Kovalev would stop, start opening up again. I believe it was the eighth round around where Canelo kind of took off. Where Kovalev started to open up a little bit more. Um, I thought it was because of Kovalev that the fight seemed to start changing directions again. But it really just was because Canelo just took the round off. Okay? Because he picked it right back up in the following round. So, I had it a draw going into it. But I liked, I felt like Canelo was winning the fight as far as what the judges, how the judges may see it. You know, as far as scoring, I had to draw. As far as the fight itself, I felt like Canelo was winning the fight because he was the one that was draw throwing and landing 
the harder shots. Um, he was off the mark a lot. You know, it was a lot of shots in there I felt was blocked or he did miss um, landing on the arms and stuff like that. But Kovalev just wasn't aggressive at all in this fight. And he wasn't throwing any shots that would make Canelo afraid of him. Uh, like I said in a live uh, feed, I thought that Kovalev was just fighting scared. He was just too defensive, you know. And it came to level round where Canelo was just opening up at one point. He landed a right hand that I think stump uh, hurt Kovalev a little bit, and then he followed it up. Kovalev was against the ropes. He was just landing too much at this point in the, of the fight. The tenth and eleventh round, I thought that Canelo was just too comfortable with throwing, getting in there, and landing the big shots. And he ended up knocking out uh, Sergey Kovalev, and it is what it is. Um, so, what does that mean for Kovalev? Well, I think he's done on my end, you know. I really didn't think he beat the other champions at 175 going into this fight, you know. Even though I picked him, I, I thought he would win this fight. I thought it was based on how he's been fighting, his range, his jab, uh, and the fact that he's been fighting, he's a bigger man. You know, he's been fighting at the way he looked good in the fight, you know. I, I You know, as far as his 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 weight and that, I thought he looked strong, uh, and I thought he was fine up until the fight happened. But at this point, I didn't really think he could beat the other champions. You know, I didn't think he could beat Volzdik at this stage of his career. I didn't think he would beat Paterviev. I didn't think he would beat Bivol. So at this point, in this stage, yes, he had a couple good wins. He won against Alida Alvarez. He did win against. Uh, Anthony Yard, cool, great, but at this stage, I mean, retirement is is a great option at this point, you know. Uh, as far as Canelo, I said on the live video that I did, I named some fighters that I thought Canelo, that I would like to see Canelo face in three different divisions, okay. At 160, I think at 160, I think the toughest challenge would be Andre. You know, uh, Andre is a guy that a lot of people want to see him face. Andre is a champion of the division. Um, I think it's going to be Triple G3, right? I think that's what fight we're going to get next. But um, I would love to see the Andre fight. You know, that's what I would love. And I think that is his toughest fight at 160 right now. Um, at 168, I think his toughest fight would be, uh, excuse me, Billy Joe Saunders. Okay. Very, very fast hands. Um, very, very slick, good defense, good legs, uh, quicker than Canelo, okay? Uh, I think that would be his toughest challenge at 168, okay? These are not fights that I think they would beat Canelo. I'm just saying names that I think would be his toughest challenge in each division. Yes, I think Benavides would be tough too. Uh, who else is up there? You got Callum Smith, who's also a champion, world boxing, super serious champion. These are all tough fights. They're not easy fights, but um, I think Billy Joe Saunders would cause the most problems for Canelo at 168, all right? Just like Andre at 160. And then at 175 right now, I would say Bevo. You know, I think Bevo and his movement and his boxing ability, his counters, his he's fresher than Kovalev. Um, he can punch as well. Uh, I think he would be the most troublesome for uh, Canelo, but Canelo would not fight him, you know, I just, there's no demand for that fight, you know, it's just really none, so I know a lot of diehards would want it, but it's just not the fight that the zone is really looking for, you know, so I don't think that fight would happen, uh, uh, I, I see Triple G happening, you know, I see that happening, or, you know, maybe a, a Charlo, I would see, I would even see Charlo before Andre, I just don't see Andre, getting a chance to fight Canelo. I just don't see it, even though he's with the zone. All right, it's just, I don't see it, you know? Um. So anyway, uh, yeah, man, I mean, Kovalev got knocked out. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I was wrong, and it's the second week I was wrong on a big fight. I've done a lot of predictions, but uh, I heard Burchell end up stopping Sosa. But two weeks back, the back uh, big fights where I was wrong in the prediction. I thought uh, Regis Progray would win, and then um, now I'm wrong again. I thought Sergey Kovalev was going to win the decision. I was wrong with both. I didn't think anyone would get knocked out, knocked out in this fight. 
Uh, you saw my dad here with me. He thought Kovalev was going to win by a knockout. But, you know, anyway, listen, I enjoyed the fight. I enjoyed going live with you guys. It was a very long six hours, six and a half hours. I think the fight of the night was definitely the ladies' fight. Ryan Garcia got an early knockout uh, on Duno. I didn't know if he would. I would. I didn't think. I knew a lock knockout was coming, and I picked Ryan to knock him out. But I was thinking more like a fifth round knockout. I wasn't thinking like first round. All right, but uh, congratulations to Canelo. Uh, congratulations to Ryan Garcia. Uh, congratulations to uh, Miguel Burchell, who run one on ESPN. Uh, all you know, top fighters. And um, I had to catch some Z's, man. I got to get some sleep. I'll see you guys. Might not be here on here tomorrow. Maybe late tomorrow night. But I'll see you guys when I get back, man. This week, we got in the way against Donair World Boxing Super Series Final at 118. So be on the lookout for that breakdown. Definitely be doing that breakdown this week uh, within the next couple days. So I'll give you a breakdown for that fight, man. Uh, welcome new subscribers. Got 94 new subscribers tonight uh, with the uh, live feed. And um, I think I said everything. All right. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. See you guys on the next one, man. Peace.